Now it's jazz, the place is roaring, all the beautiful girls in there, one mad brunette at the bar, drunk with her boys. One strange chick I remember from somewhere, wearing a simple skirt with pockets, her hands in there. Short haircut, slouched, talking to everybody. Up and down the stairs they come, the bartenders and the regular band of Jack and the heavenly drummer who looks up in the sky with blue eyes, with a beard. He's wailing beer caps and bottles and jamming at the cash register and everything is going to the beat. It's the beat generation, it's Bayat. It's the beat to keep, it's the beat of the heart. It's being beat and down in the world and like old time low down. And like in ancient civilizations, the slave boatmen rowing galleys to a beat. tonight and talk a little, tell a few stories maybe or something. A little music kind of loud here. Turn that down a bit. Um, jazz always gets my uh, juices worked up to where I gotta get, come on and talk, tell a story, or even uh, write. Whenever I hear uh, jazz or anybody reading poetry, it uh, gets me to wanting to either write or talk. <laughs> One of the two. But tonight I was thinking about um, a few years ago, uh, before I got married, I went with... Uh, Joni, uh, downtown here in Lawrence, and we were searching around. She was trying to find a wedding dress or something to wear to our wedding. Well, you know how women are; they're worried about how they look and stuff. I wasn't so worried. I would have got, I would have got married in uh, jeans and a t-shirt <laughs> and a pair of uh, Converse All-Star tennis shoes. That would have been my perfect wedding outfit maybe one of those bow tie t-shirts because <laughs> you know I'm not very serious about anything except for trying to be funny or whatever but we went in this little shop downtown here and um supposedly uh, this shop was ran by some sort of mystical hippie type lady that claimed to be into uh, Wicca and witchcraft and that sort of thing. And she made these uh, custom like dresses for people or women that were long and like flowing see-through flowery hippie type stuff, much like you see, um, that, uh, what's her name, uh, the Fleetwood Mac lady, she wears that type of stuff. But we went in, we went into the shop, and Joni went in the back, and I sort of sat out in front while this lady asked, uh, I was showing her some dresses and they were supposed to be trying them on, this and that. And after they were, after they were done doing their thing, trying on the dresses, or this, they were basically scarves. <laughs> That's what I would describe them. Hippie scarves, like from the 70s flower child days. And I just walked back, you know, all innocent like. Just sort of sat down in the chair while they were visiting. And this old witch lady sort of looks at me and says, Why are you looking at me like why are you looking at me like that? 
and I was sort of dumbfounded. And there was like a, f a few moments of silence and while we were all, while I was sitting there dumbfounded and I guess Joni was dumbfounded and the, the lady had a serious angry look on her face, you know, why are you looking at me like that? dirty bastard <laughs> and Joni already knew my story by then and she says that's just the way he looks at people and I said yeah I always look at people like that when I first meet him you know I'm not the type of person I'm the type of person that stays in my room a lot because I really don't like meeting people because I see everything about them almost instantly. I can see into their soul just by looking at them. <laughs> that sounds scary. But <laughs> but anyway, the the uh. The thing of that story goes is that um, I looked at her up and down and like an instant or even a few seconds and I could see that she's some type of manipulator of people. I didn't, I didn't say that at the time. I looked into her eyes, you know, I looked her from head to foot. I do that with everybody, I guess, when I first meet them. And that's why I don't have a lot of friends. Because I evaluate everybody and everything that I see. <clears throat> Just like uh, my mom, I could hear the creaking of my mom's chair in the other room. And she got up to go into the bathroom. I can hear the door shut, the creaking of the door. I take into account everything that goes on around me with everybody. And sometimes it gets a little bit gets to be a little bit too much, so that's why I prefer sometimes just to be alone. <laughs> But anyway, back to the story. The old lady went on to say that she was, uh, she, li she lived out in the uh, country somewhere. Down some long gravel road somewhere. And one day she had a trespasser on her property. It was a gated property or something. And she had said she had to uh, break break out her shotgun. <laughs> I don't know what she had it lo loaded with, buckshot or something. But anyway, she she shot it over the person's head, <laughs> and whoever the uh, unfortunate soul may have been. And they took off and she went back to her home in her bare feet and long flowing black dress that she uh, preferred to wear most of the time, which she designed herself out of napkins and old scarves from World War Two or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some crazy. That was some crazy memory. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I, I just remember everything. Okay, except I don't need a peanut <laughs> to remember stuff. I forget. <laughs> but the bad thing is, when a mouse runs by, I scream like a little girl. Me. <laughs> Uh, 
<sighs> crazy times and crazy places here on Radio Crazy. Weirdos Unite. 